the correct pronunciation, if you were in Sicily, would be Buscemi, right? Buscemi. <laughs> but then, so, you know, people say Buscemi, which is, which is nice. Mm -hmm. I, I just grew up saying, actually, I grew up saying Buscemi. But I find it hard to say that. So I say Buscemi. So there's actually like four different ways. <laughs> I used to say it Buscemi. That's I, fine. I mean, until I you told me one day that oh, it was Buscemi. Oh, I was just about to say, I never correct people. And I just... <laughs> uh, OK, hold on. Let me get to and this. And it's Cary Grant. <laughs> Not many people know that. The stupid jokes. Um, um, so uh, Buscemi said he was always interested in acting. This is a recent interview, uh, but he didn't feel that connected to the drama department. I, I felt more comfortable around jocks. Yeah, so you were a wrestler. I was a wrestler, school. yeah, yeah. Not that that's, I, I'm not saying like, you know, that it's us and them, it's the artists and the jocks or something. But I guess I, 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 I yeah. there were so many things that I feel I have in common with you. It, that it kind of threw me off that I didn't have that in common with you. Do you know what I mean? Do you want to wrestle? <laughs> no, I don't. I, not with you. Uh, um, I, yeah, I mean, I primarily grew up in Long Island, and um, I played soccer and a little bit of track, but wrestling was the sport that I uh, really took to because I, uh, one of my best friends, uh, Richie Earl, his father was the wrestling coach, and uh, we were the same age, uh, uh, you know, a weight class and age, and so I was his partner, which was, he was like a great wrestler. So it was kind of like a big deal that I was his wrestling partner. And um, I wasn't bad, I mean, I was, I was okay. I had like a secret move. Mm -hmm. It was called the reverse cradle. Did Does anybody? Invent it? I didn't invent it, no, no. But it's, but not many people like would try this move because it's, it, it doesn't usually work. But, I, but uh, I was just so determined. Sometimes I would be, when I would be losing or, you know, and what you do is you get the guy in a headlock, basically, and then you get his leg, and then you take it, you grip like this, and then, uh, and it's a really hard thing to get out of. And I actually beat guys who were better than me uh, because of that move, yeah. But like, I think there's somewhere else in here, you know, like uh, uh, a thing about, something about confrontation. I don't want to start talking about acting. I don't, I don't know if we want to get into like acting and, and destroy the mystery of acting and the mystique of what we do. Yeah, it's very hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't understand. No. Like I, I, I remember uh, actually in the hallway of the hotel there when we first met on Billy Bathgate, right. there was some guy like kind of like he opened his door. He's like, what's going on out here? Or what's going on out here? <laughs> or something. Yeah. He's like, "What's going?" And then, uh, and and uh, and you said you stepped right up to the guy. You're not gonna remember this, but you st you kind of go, "Well, you know, you better go back in your room right now because <laughs> <laughs> something's gonna happen. Something bad's gonna happen to you." <laughs> you know, with a with a with a face like that, with an ugly face like that, you better get back in your room, buddy. <laughs> I was like standing there with my beer, like. Are we gonna get in a fight? <laughs> this guy's crazy. So, you know, anyway. All right, but in my defense, I think he was a crew member. <laughs> and I think I sort, of, I sort of knew him. No, I mean, what I say, I, did I You're say right. that to a That's stranger? That's probably what it was. I was, but I was like a kid at the time. But you didn't know. I was yeah. very, I didn't have much experience. And, uh, yeah. you know, I didn't know how things were, you know. I, I sh you know, I just thought that, uh, <laughs> There was going to be trouble. <laughs> but I was ready to back you up, man. I was Thank ready. You. I was ready. Um, you know, but I, I, you know, I now now that I know that you used to be a wrestler and that you're not afraid of confrontation, I figured that you probably don't have that no, problem. No, I'm too terrified. Much. I'm ter I'm no, really, I'm terrified of, of confrontation and of acting in general and any new thing that I that I take on. Uh, I really suffer from anxiety, <laughs> um, and um, uh, and I don't know how I get out of bed in the morning sometimes, <laughs> um, because uh, because I need a reason, I, you know, and so that's why I think I do what I do. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I, you know, uh, wow. my life is pretty scary. I think. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But I always buy you. I always I always believe you. Man. <laughs> 
Well, I don't always believe myself. Yeah, oh, I guess it's, uh, it evens out then. <laughs> I guess it's just like a, a, a kind of a phantom thing. It's like, it's, yeah, I don't, you're overthinking it, you know, type of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, I, 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 I guess I'm gonna sort of make a, 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 a change the subject now. <laughs> Not that, you know... I can I, uh, tell you how much I love this guy. <laughs> I do. Anytime that we work together, and we, we, we have worked together many, many times. We have, yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, uh, living in Oblivion and Delirious, and you were in Trees Lounge. That's one of my favorite things. That I've yeah, you know, here's what I want to ask. Um, and, and actually, you know, uh, I, I asked a friend of mine to say, you know, I'm going to interview Steve Buscemi tonight. What would you ask him? And this friend of mine said, when are you going to write and direct another feature? And, and I, I'm like, yeah, I want to know that too. <laughs> like another, another uh, picture like, like Trees Lounge. Trees Lounge, like, that was like, that took everything out of me. I don't consider myself a writer. I never wanted to be a writer, thought that I could ever do that or directing. I was lucky in my early days of starting out in the East Village um, that I met uh, another actor named Mark Boone Jr., who you know. Um, and we used, to, we used to just create our own work because we didn't know how to go about uh, getting hired for anything. We'd, we had no clue. And it kind of didn't matter. Like, in the East Village, you know, in the early 80s, there was just so much that was going on. I mean, I knew that this scene was happening around me, but I didn't know, I didn't know how to get into it. And, I, and at the time I was doing, I was trying to do stand-up comedy. And I was doing it at these uptown clubs, like the Improv on 44th Street, and um, not really getting on stage much, but, you know, but hanging out there. And I literally would just sit in the back and watch Jerry Seinfeld and Gilbert Godfrey and Paul Reiser, um, and all these guys just perform, and they were amazing. And maybe once in a blue moon, I would get on at like two in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, one time, I remember, it was just after midnight, so there were still pe people there. And for some reason, they, they, they ran out of comics. And the, uh, the manager, who I'm pretty sure it was Chris Albrecht, the guy who, who worked for HBO, and he used to, you know, I mean, I don't blame him, but he never would put me on. He would look at me and, you know, and like look at somebody else and all right, you, okay. And then one night there was literally nobody to, to like put up there. And he, and he kind of looks at me and he's like, and he's look, he's really looking around like for anybody to like materialize. And he's can you, all right, you're on next. And uh, so I'm waiting to go on. About two minutes before I'm about to go on, Paul Reiser walks to the door. <laughs> like, oh, Paul, great, you're here. You're on next. <laughs> um, but the other great thing about the improv, before I passed the auditions there, I actually saw Andy Kaufman there. Oh, wow. uh, me and my friends saw Andy Kaufman, but he, but he wasn't, again, he wasn't part of the, the, the regular, you know, comedians that were on that night. It was at the end of the night, we were the last table. It was like two o'clock in the morning, and I happened to look behind me and I saw Andy Kaufman standing in the doorway, you know, like in the back, and the waitress, said, are you, are you gonna go on? He goes, nah, there's nobody here. And I actually went up to him <laughs> and I asked him to go on. And he did. And, and he brought us all up on stage and we sang Old MacDonald. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what kind of material were you doing at that time? Here's the thing about doing comedy. I, I could never find my own voice, you know, I would steal a little bit from Dangerfield or, uh, or Jerry Seinfeld or whoever was, you know, working and sort of appropriated like, like different people's styles. And I think if I, you know, stuck with it, maybe yeah. I would have developed my own voice, but I just did not like the aloneness of it. And it was very cliquish. It was very, you know, it was really hard to, I just most of the time felt like a jerk, you know, <laughs> like, like, like I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to get in. Who, you know, I, I feel like we're, we're we're going on way too long. Aren't we? I, oh, I don't know, yeah. Ace uh, Billy. Can I tell one more story? No. Okay. <laughs>